Okay, welcome to this video where we are looking at exponentials and logarithms. In this video, we're going to have a look at exponential functions, we'll have a look at some exponential graphs, and then we're going to finish off looking at exponential modelling. So this is obviously part of the final chapter, looking at exponentials and logarithms. And if you want to have a look at logarithms, you obviously just need to go into the description and have a look at the video for that as well. So just in case you haven't already followed along with all the other chapters, this will be the last one and you can find the rest of the chapters in the description. So just in case you haven't seen them, I'm just going to quickly show you how this video works. So when you are on one of these videos, if you click into the description, you can see the video there where I cover all of the AS Pure curriculum. And if you scroll down, you can also see all of the chapters. Now these will slowly be filling up until it is filled the entire AS Pure curriculum. So hopefully by the time that you are watching this video, all of them will be actually in the description and you can click and watch each chapter. If you click onto the video and click the link in the bottom left there, you can actually see all of the chapters that are within this video as well. So you can skip through and have a look at the pieces of that chapter that you are needing to have a look at for your revision. So that's how this video works. Hopefully that's useful and helpful. If you enjoy this video, please don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to share it with some of your friends. But with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so when having a look at exponential graphs, it's important that we're able to sketch them. So this question says on the same axes, sketch the graphs of y equals two to the power of x and y equals a half to the power of x. So if we draw a little sketch of some axes, we can think about what these would look like. Now for the first one, we will sketch y equals two to the power of x. Now this is an increasing function here, so it would be sloping upwards. And again, with an exponential function, the graph approaches but never touches zero. So this would be our y equals two to the power of x. And now we'll have a look at y equals a half to the power of x. So for y equals a half to the power of x, that is a decreasing function. So it would be sloping downwards. Now it would look very similar to this, but it would just be sloping the other way. And as you can see, it is decreasing and again, getting closer and closer to it approaches, but never touches zero. So this one here would be y equals one half to the power of x. There we go put that in a bracket and to the power of x. Now, as with all exponential functions, there are a couple of things that you need to be aware of. So for these exponentials here, if we were to put in an x value of zero, which is what's on the y axis there, we would get a y coordinate just here of one. Anything to the power of zero is one, so that's something to be aware of. Another thing that we should be aware of as well is that we have an asymptote. Now this here never actually touches the x-axis, so the x-axis is our asymptote. Now for this one here, the equation of the x-axis is y equals zero. So our asymptote of these graphs, and we'll just label that there, asymptote, there we go is y is equal to zero. Of course, that would change if we put a graph transformation in, something like two to the power of x plus five would move the graph upwards by five, which would move our y-intercept and would also change our asymptote. But there we go, that is looking at sketching exponential graphs. So when it comes to differentiating an exponential, there is just a few rules that we need to know. So this question here says to differentiate y equals 2e to the power of 3x with respect to x. Now if we are going to differentiate this, all we actually have to do is do it in a similar way to how we differentiate, but just one little thing changes. So when we do the differential, so dy over dx of this exponential, we multiply the coefficient of e by the coefficient of the x. So that means we are just going to multiply the two by the three this time, which makes it six. We still have e and the power stays the same. So that is just still going to be a power of three x. So if at any point you have to differentiate an exponential, this is all that you need to do. Multiply the coefficient of e by the coefficient of the x in the power and then keep the power the same. So differentiating an exponential is quite nice and simple. 
Okay, so when we are solving an equation with an exponential, and we're at this question here says to solve the equation e to the power of 2x plus 3 is equal to 7, and we're going to give our answer in exact form. And this is when we start to use natural logarithms. So in order to remove the e at the start, we take the natural logarithm of both sides. Now the natural logarithm is just the inverse of our exponential there. So if we write this out, e to the power of 2x plus 3 is equal to 7. When we take our natural log of both sides, the e disappears, we get 2x plus 3, and that is going to be equal to the natural log of 7. So it's quite nice and easy to get rid of the exponential. All you need to do is take the natural log of both sides and essentially it just drops the power down. Now we can just solve it like a normal equation. So we would take away 3 from both sides which would leave us with 2x is equal to the natural log of 7 take away 3 and then we would divide both sides by 2. So x is equal to the natural log of 7 minus 3 all divided by 2. Of course that could be written in a different way, we could put that divided by 2 in front of both, so we could say a half of log 7 minus a half of 3, which is just could just be written as 3 over 2. So either one of those would be fine as our answer, I tend to write my answer like this most of the time, so I do prefer that one on the right, but both of those answers there are fine, and we have given our answer in exact form as we have left the natural log within our answer. OK, so another type of equation where we're going to be using natural logs. So for this particular one here, you can see what we actually have is an exponential quadratic here. And we're just going to have a look at factorising it in order to find our solutions. So it says solve that equation e to the power of 2x minus e to the power of x plus 12 is equal to 0. And again, giving your answers in exact form. So for this question here, it does give us a bit of a hint that we're going to be using natural logs. And to start with, we just need to factorise it. So at the start of both of our brackets, we will have e to the power of x, as when you expand that, e to the power of x multiplied by e to the power of x would equal e to the power of 2x. And that is all equal to 0. Of course, if it wasn't equal to 0, you may just have to rearrange these first. But once we've got it into that form, we can now factorise. So looking at the 12 there, we could have some factors. We're trying to make 8 in the middle, so 2 and 6 is going to work. So in our bracket, we'll have minus 2 and minus 6, and that would equate to negative 8e to the power of x in the centre there. So we have two solutions. For the first one, we have e to the power of x has to be equal to positive 2, and here we have e to the power of x has to be equal to positive 6. Now before we just go ahead and solve that, just as a side note, when we have this here, e to the power of x has to be positive. Okay, e to the power of x must be positive. And that means if we do get an answer which says e to the power of x is equal to negative 3, for example, we would have to discard that answer and we would just use the 1. But this one here, we have both being positive, e to the power of x equals 2, and e to the power of x equals 6. So these are both going to be solutions, and it does give you a little bit of a hint here as it says the word answers. So for this one, we now just take the natural log of both sides. So for the first one on the left there, x would equal the natural log of 2, and x would equal the natural log of 6 and again they are both in exact form so we would leave our answers like that so e x equals the natural log of 2 and the natural log of 6. Okay so when we are having a look at modeling with exponentials the questions do get quite tricky so it says here the value of a car and that is in v pounds can be modeled by the equation v is equal to 15,700 e to the power of minus 0.25 t plus 2,300 where t is a real number and t is greater than or equal to zero where the age of the car is given to us in t years. Always worth highlighting that the age of the car is t years just so we don't forget about that. So it says here, using the model, find the initial value of the car. Now the initial value of the car would be found when t is equal to 0. So all we need to do to find the initial value of the car is substitute t equals 0 into our equation and see what we get. 
Now, if we do substitute t equals zero, we would have 15,700 e to the power of a negative 0.25 t times zero is just gonna equal zero. Now, anything to the power of zero is one, so that is just gonna be 15,700. We then have to add 2,300 to that, and that means we just have 15,700 plus the 2,300, which gives us a final answer of, and it's in pounds, so we would say 18,000 pounds. And that would be the initial value of the car. So we'll just underline that as that's our first answer. On to part B, it says given the model predicts that the value of the car is decreasing at a rate of £500 per year at the instant where the time is equal to capital T, show that 3000, and let's just highlight this, 3925e to the power of negative 0.25 capital T is equal to 500. So in order to look at this, we would want to differentiate that as we are looking at the rate of change or the gradient there when it is going down by 500. Now also just taking note here, if it is going down by 500 pounds per year, that would be a negative 500 as our gradient. So in order to find this, we're just gonna to want to differentiate it to start with. So we're gonna differentiate V and we're gonna do that with respect to T. So if we differentiate dv by dt, and we are gonna be doing this at the instant where t is equal to capital T. So we're just gonna replace the little t with big T in our differential. So if we go about doing that here, let's have a look at what we get. So we're gonna multiply 15,700 by negative 0.25. And if we type that into our calculator, we get negative 3,925 e to the power of, and don't forget when you're differentiating an exponential, the power's not gonna change, so it will be to the power of negative 0.25 and it says that little t is equal to big T, so big T. Now we have got that, all we need to do is think about setting this equal to the gradient that we've been told, and that is that it's going down by 500. So if we set that equal to 500, we would have negative 3,925 e to the power of negative 0.25t, and that is equal to negative 500. Now we've got one step in order to make it look like how we've been asked to make it look like, and that is to divide both sides by negative one. Well, that would remove the negative from both sides, so our final answer would be positive 3,925e to the power of negative 0.25t, and that is gonna be equal to positive 500. That is exactly what the question has asked us to show, so we have finished off our answer, and we have shown what the question was asking for. Okay, so on to part two. It says here, hence find the age of the car at this instant, giving your answer in years and months to the nearest month. So for this particular part of the question, we have our equation to solve. We've just got that 3,925e to the negative 0.25t is equal to 500. So we want to know the value of t at this instant. So the first thing that we can do, and if we carry on from our part one, and we'll just label this as part one, part i, and then we'll carry on here with part two. So the first thing that we're gonna do is divide by the 3,925. And if we go about doing that, then we will get, and let's just have a look, we will have, if we type it into our calculator, e to the power of negative 0.25t, and in fact we don't really need to type it in because we can just write it as 500 over 3,925. Let's actually put the correct number there, 3,925. So for the next step, we want to remove the exponential. So if we take the natural log of both sides, we will have that negative 0.25t is equal to the natural log of, and we'll put this in brackets, 500 over 3,925. We now have one more step to get our value of t, and that is to divide by negative 0.25. And if we do that, we'll write that over here, divide by negative 0.25, and we get a value of t 
that is equal to, um, and what would it be? Let's type it into our calculator. So the natural log of 500 over 3925, and then divide that by negative 0.25, and we get the answer 8.242. A few more decimals here, so we'll leave it at 8.242. And if we look at that there, that is in years. And it, remember, it said that in the question, and we highlighted that at the start. So that is eight and a quarter, or almost eight and a quarter years. And it does say give it to the nearest month. So a quarter of a year would be equal to three months. So our answer for this here would be eight years. There we go, three months. And that would be our final answer for part two of part B. So eight years, three months, and we'll just highlight that, and that part is finished. Now for part C, it says the model predicts that the value of the car approaches but does not fall below A. State the value of A. Now in order to do this, we need to think about what the exponential graph actually looks like. So if we do this, and we can just about fit it in at the top here, if I get rid of t equals zero, if we draw a small sketch of an exponential graph up here, and we think about what it would look like, we know it is decreasing in value, so it would come down something like this. Now, we would have an asymptote just up here. And if we draw this in and think about the reason that I have drawn it up at the top there, the reason I have drawn it up at the top is because our exponential has this plus 2300 just at the end. Now that means it has been translated upwards and this value here would be 2300. So as it has, has moved up from 2300, that means it is never going to approach, well it's going to approach, but it is never going to fall below 2300. So the value of A to finish this question would be 2,300 pounds. And we'll write this down the bottom, we'll highlight that as our final answer, and there we go. And that is looking at modeling with exponentials. Okay, so that is the end of the video, looking at exponentials. Obviously, if you haven't already, go and check out the video on logarithms, or check out any of the other videos in the description, looking at the other chapters. This is obviously the final chapter on the AS Pure Maths curriculum, so do make sure that you follow along with any of the other videos, and be in tune for obviously some of the other videos that I'm going to have coming out, looking at some of these topics in a little bit more depth. But that is obviously the last one, so please do like the video, please subscribe, please leave me a comment if you have enjoyed any of this series, and let me know anything that you'd be looking for next. But until the next one, I will see you for the next topic video.